Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from NFL playoffs to pro and college basketball, UFC, MMA, and more. You always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. With live betting options, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable, Bet Online is truly the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite leagues and events. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B L E A V BELIEVE to receive the rewards. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Welcome to Believe in Celtics, brought to you by Bet Online. I'm your host, Warren Shaw. He is the great Gary Washburn, and we are hosting res- for resource for everything Boston Celtics this season. Gary, crazy, crazy week um, that we just finished. You know, not so crazy ahead, hopefully, but how's everything been on your side, family? Yeah, great, great. A lot of great basketball, a lot of exciting basketball, interesting basketball. And obviously, that Saturday night game against the Lakers, uh, one that will go down in the history as one of the more interesting and, uh, you know, exciting, but also just uh, fascinating games and things you've never seen before happened to that night at TD Garden in that Celtic Lake rivalry. So, uh, you know, just when you thought you had it all, everything was done and everything, you know, you, you've seen it all with the Celtics rivalry and the Lakers rivalry. You hadn't. Nope. So nope. there's more to come. Yeah. I mean, two classic games against, you know, the, the Lakers this season, really. And, you know, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but I just kind of have to laugh because after all the controversy, you know, to just kind of see NBA TV, like play, Hey, is our, like our featured game of the week? Like they played it like four times. I was like, you might want to hide that one a little bit. As well yeah. too, it wasn't, yeah, not, it wasn't yeah, a better moment. The association won't be too ha- happy with that. The referee association <laughs> and the <laughs> union won't be too happy with like all the bad calls and yeah. all the, all the controversy and the, you know, Eric Lewis, the lead official, looked like he was – he had a tough night. You know, he had a real tough night. Yeah, bro. And then the referee tweets after the fact. and Oh, man. Anyway, all right, we got to get to that. But yeah. so <laughs> we're going to, uh, you know, break things down here, obviously talk about Celtics rivalry week. Um, that Laker game will be a heavy part of our conversation. Uh, we'll get into the week ahead on the Geno Times second game against Brooklyn Nets and Phoenix Suns, two teams that have some maybe some angst against Boston as well, too. So almost rivalry will continue to some degree. Um, but we're going to introduce a new segment on this week's edition, and we're going to call it Washburn's Whispers. Yes. You know, what we're going to do is more or less get Gary's take on kind of like the inner workings of the team, especially as we're leading up here to the trade deadline. So before we do that, let's get to our plugs. As always, make sure you give our show a five-star rating on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on follow gary on twitter at g washburn globe follow me on twitter at shaw sports nba and make sure you're following everything you know on believe at believe network or at believe sports and make sure you're giving our our folks at better line you know some love as well too so i know working title you know you know again i told people i told gary before like i like alliteration but we'll see but we want to go with Washburn's whispers right what the listeners and the the viewers think about that if not Give us some suggestions. Yes, sir. Make it, make it clean. Make it clean. Make it, oh, please, please make it clean. <laughs> <laughs> so what we want to hear now, Gary, is just kind of like what what are some inner workings that you're hearing around the team, especially as we lead up to the trade deadline? Um, obviously, we've spoken a lot about what we think they may need, front court depth, stretch four, something like that, or five. Um, obviously, the news, you know, with, with Jaka Pertle a couple of weeks ago, talks about Peyton Pritchard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just kind of what are you hearing after they clear that roster spot with Noah Bonley a few weeks ago? Anything that the Celtics should Celtics faithful should be looking forward to as the trade deadline approaches here on February 9th. Yeah, I mean, I think okay, so Mike, we're we're rolling up right on it, Warren. Like the trade deadline's next Thursday, February yeah. 9th. I mean, it's it's not, I think you know, we're used to it kind of happening and landing during the all-star game, which is like a week and a you know, 10 days later. So we're used to that, but all the trade deadlines now, good full week before the All Star break. So watch out. I mean, this is this is creeping up. I think the Celtics are looking for one another wingman. I think a guy who come off the bench, hit some buckets, play a little defense, six 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 seven. Um, the guy that I think that they should get. Okay, I'm going to put this out there. I, I wrote this is Terrence Ross from Orlando Magic. Now. Terrence Ross makes eleven and a half million, so it would be uh, 
trade is unlikely. Buyout might be likely because from what I've looked at, Ross is out of the rotation in Orlando. The, the, the Magic are going young, um, and especially now, as you saw, you're down there, uh, Warren, with Jonathan Isaac back in the fold. They got a lot of young guys to play. Like they, <laughs> They're filled with a bunch of dudes who need to play ball from – Great, you know, Cole Anthony, Banchero starting, obviously, the Wagner brothers, Bol Bol, Mo Bamba, Jonathan Isaac, Gary Harris is now healthy. So they got like 10 to 11 guys that Jamal Mosley needs to play. And there you have Terrence Ross, who's about to turn 32, um, sitting there kind of like not, he hasn't had some, he's had some DMPs the last week. So to me, it could be a situation for a buyout in Orlando, and maybe uh, if he has his eyes targeted on trying to compete for a championship. Obviously, he's in his tenth year now. We know Terrence to he stuck it out in Orlando for sure after his years in Toronto. Uh, but it might be time uh, for a divorce, and I'm not saying a, a bad one, but it might be you know he goes to the manager and says, "Listen, guys, I'm a free agent. You're not bringing me back. Um, get me somewhere I can try to win, win, win." You know, I put it, I've been around with, with you guys and helped your organization grow. But it looks like you saw, I mean, you've seen them beat the Celtics three times in a row. The Magic are approaching that next step, you know, right? Like they're going to play their ass off, I'm sure, to, to try to get into that play in. But they have, they this year have taken that next step of, okay, we're not, uh, you know, we're not chumps anymore. Like we're going to win. And they pushed the heat uh, to the brink in the fourth quarter the other night. So I think that's a guy they should target. Or I know they're looking, I was looking for a third big man. Now, if you watch a Laker game, which you did, those Luke Cornett minutes are starting to get interesting, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they're putting him in key situations at times. He's not a real guy. Like, usually bigs are really good at finishing. Luke is not that guy. Luke's uncomfortable with just like, I'm a slamming it in your face. Usually seven footers, that's what they do. Right, you're the tallest guy on the court since you were 12 years old or whatever. You're good at stuffing it in a guy's face. Luke's a very hesitant finisher, and there was many instances in the Knicks game and the Lakers game where he had chances to finish and he passed it up. So the minutes for Luke are starting to get interesting. To whereas you either hope he improves or tell him to be more aggressive, or you try to get someone in there who could maybe fill that role a little bit with because you want to give Robert a, a break here and there, um, and Al's 36 years old. So I think a wing position and a center position are what they're looking for. Now, what they have to offer is they have a Dennis Schroeder trade exemption of $5.9 million. They have another small trade exception, but they also have the d- contract of Danilo Gallinari. Now, is Gallinari going to be ready for the playoffs? Is he going to be re- – he's a player option for next year, so he could opt out. You know, uh, does he feel like, hey, I owe the Celtics something. I'm not going to just literally take their money and then opt out and go somewhere next year. Um, I'm going to come back. The question is for what what you do with him. And is he close, right? We've had a couple of guys like Ricky Rubio recently came back from ACL tear, I think, after after about eight months. So if you're the, the Celtics, will Gallinari be useful for the playoffs? If that's the case, he's kind of worth it, right? If he helps you push you to that next level, Warren gets you a championship, you hold on to him. If not, you can use his contract as a trade. He's got to opt out. Then, he, then you know, the team gets salary cap relief. The Celtics get a player in. So that was would be what they would trade. I don't think the Yaka Pearl thing is going to happen. I think he's just too high of a price. When you're talking about $10, $12 million contracts, then you're going to have to start giving up guys that are in your rotation. You know, Pritchard and – Let's say a Grant Williams, Pritch, you know what I'm saying? Like you're gonna have to give up guys that are that have real value. Do you want to mess with your chemistry? Do you want to give up something to get something? Uh, you know, to be, I think the buyout market might be the best for the Celtics or a, 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 a economical trade. There are bigs out there like Nerlens Noel. I mean, guys out there that could literally help you in a role of a third big, right? Um, or in, in the swingman position, there are guys that will likely be bought out. We'll see. And if you, if you 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 follow the league, Warren, 
What Toronto's going to do is going to be very, very, very interesting because they got some guys, um, you know, who could be available. Um, you know, like a guy like Thad Young, you know, uh, who's obviously seems like he's been in the league for 20 years, but it, yeah. uh, he's been around a long time, but he's a vet. So I think guys like in that genre, that category, like cheap veterans will be available, um, especially in the buyout market. So look, for, it might come after February 9th or whatever when guys start getting bought out. But I think a wing position and a center position is what they're looking to fill. Because as you've seen, um, Jason is wearing it, getting worn out. Yep. And so is Jalen. And you need a guy to give them some some relief. And I think, unfortunately, for the Celtics, the Sam Hauser thing isn't working out like a, they, as much as they, they would like. You know, he's a guy who's, who's six seven six eight. Now He's not your traditional 3 and D guy at all, but he's a guy who can shoot. And, you know, he's getting a lot of open looks, and he's not knocking them down. And he's been – I think he's – uh. I did the numbers since November. He's at 29% from three. So this is now a prolonged slump. Like this is yeah. this is almost two months, Warren. So can you count on him? Do you hope that the, the shots start going down? Is it something mechanical? Um, you know, can he help you down the stretch? Because I think that's now a question that Brad Stevens and the brass need to ask themselves. Like, okay, like um, we got Derek White. Derek's – up and down, I believe, just as my personal opinion. I think Derek's solid but not spectacular. But Hauser's a guy I think they kind of thought would be their version of a Max Struess or a Duncan Rock guy. Come on, boom, 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 you know, three yeah, threes. Yeah, and they like said, you know, it just hasn't been the case uh, since November. Uh, so I think to fill that spot, I personally would try to see knock, you know, kick the tires on Terrence Ross. I think he'd be perfect. I think he's a guy still great, have great athleticism. As you remember, a former dunk contest winner, a guy who has kind of languished in Orlando for years. I mean, he's, I'm sure he loves it down there. You live in sunny Florida, you know, it's a great place to live and all that. But I think he's probably saying to himself, okay, Terrence, like, I got to, I got to get back to past the first round here, man. I, I want to do something here. So it might be time that he might be available. You know, I like I like what you said there, Gary. I think you know, and and making things realistic for 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 Boston, um, because a guy, you know, I think even as you were before you were talking, I said, man, I was watching, and you know, I thought about Orlando specifically. I think in some ways you're right; they're due for maybe not necessarily a consolidation trade, but maybe some sort of 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 parts that need to move away simply because they're heading in a different direction. So I was a little surprised, honestly, that they re-signed Bamba you know, in the off season, knowing that they were going to have Isaac and, and obviously they were still kind of enamored with Wendell Carter, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, man, Bamba could be somebody that I know Miami is kicking tires on or have, has some interest in. And I was like, well, if, if that's the case, can you get in there? Cause he's only owed 10 million or 20 yeah. million or whatever the case would be for the next two years. So 10 each, you know, I think it's a, it's a, it's a movable contract, so to speak. And I'd love to see if Boston could get into that, but Orlando is a team, I think in general, as you're alluding to maybe a team to watch as you look to Toronto as well. Chicago, I don't think any of what Chicago would be giving is within Boston's, you know, proverbial wallet right now, um, unless yeah. they were to maybe wave Andre Drummond um, and do you bring him in as again, as you're alluding to kind of that third big, but obviously not stretchy in any capacity, you know, no, so he'll just get your rebounds. I mean, he, yeah. I mean, obviously he's a, he's a, he's a rebound machine. The other guy too, Warren, that I think is best case scenario is PJ Washington from Charlotte. Now, the question is Charlotte is another team to look out for is PJ is in that Grant Williams situation. He did not get the rookie extension. Mm. So he'll be, he makes, I think of literally three and a half million or whatever. Being the Hold on. Let me, let me interrupt you real quick though, though. So in addition to Grant Williams, do you feel like PJ Washington would be an upgrade over what Grant Williams provide? Can they coexist? Yeah, that's a good question. Like now do you, do you like, does Charlotte have any interest in Grant? Do you do you make that's a real risky deal because you like Grant? He's part of the chemistry, but I think PJ is a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, can shoot from the three, and can add to that wing kind of position. That's best case scenario. He's young. I mean, I saw him last week in Charlotte. He had twenty five against the Celtics. Like this guy can score. He's he's a tweener though. You know, in, in Charlotte, you don't know what they're doing down there. I mean. 
They're still good. I said they got another year of Gordon Hayward. They got three more years of uh, Terry Rozier. They got to save all their quarters for the LaMelo ball extension. Um, and then, you know, and then I think a guy who has kind of come, come on strong is Jay, uh, Jaden McDaniels, who had 26 points <laughs> against the Celtics in that, that game that Tatum at 51. And he's a guy, second round pick under their control. I think he makes like $4 million over the next, like that dude, you're not, you know, I've seen rumors of moving him. And, and people on Charlotte are like, why the hell would we move that guy? Homegrown, second round pick, and he doesn't make any money. I mean, that would be, you know, now I know that I know he's, uh, I think, unfortunately, I think he just finished his deal. I'm sorry. He's a free agent. But I think if you're Charlotte, you you can't sign both Washington and McDaniels. I think you got to choose one. And I, I think McDaniels is the one they're going to probably choose. So I do think he might be available. But if you're the Hornets, you got to ask for a first round pick for the guy. Like you can't. You can't do the Hachimura deal and move him for uh, Kendrick Nunn in three seconds. Like I think Charlotte says, we're gonna get a little bit greedy here. So um, I think that's best case scenario. That if you're Celtics, do you sign him as a restricted free agent next year? Do you choose him over Grant? Now you can figure all that out. And you know, as uh, on a Whit Grusbeck said on the uh, Celtics pregame show, like we're going all in this year, and that's a big deal. For a, for a team that doesn't really like to be in the luxury tax warren. Yeah. And, but they, I think they realize looking at the East, looking at the West, like this is the year. There's no great team in the NBA. Not even the Celtics are not a great team. That was, that was a very good team. Right. Have a chance to win 60 games, all that. They're not a great team. They can get great, but they do have a chance to win the championship this year because as you, as you follow the league just as much as I do, there are no great teams in the league this year. We, We've seen if Denver's the best, Denver kind of lost it, you know, at Philadelphia the other day, had a fourth quarter lead, 15 point lead early in the fourth and or late in the third and blew it. If that's the best, Memphis just broke a five game losing streak. Yeah. Uh, New Orleans is New Orleans, I think now has lost eight in a row, uh, is back down to like seven. So all these teams were like, oh, here they come. The Clippers, you know, are so up and down. So I think if you're the Celtics, this is the year you go for it. Yeah, yeah, I think those are great points. Again, as always, Gary Washburn here, I um, believe in Celtics, you know, and I think when we look at the stock of the league, Charlotte is one of those teams that should be like, as we said before, getting into the women Yama sweepstakes. So you got to start figuring out what that looks like and do you start selling off those parts in essence to be able to do just that. Um, I feel like the Spurs may be looking at some, some options as well, but their asking price seems to be pretty astronomical. You know, and some of these other teams, they don't, I've heard some, some rumors about Houston, um, you know, maybe looking to move some of their guys, um, like was it Tate and Martin and guys like that too. Tate, yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, people people who can help you, so to speak. But um, for a team like Boston, I don't know if it puts you over the edge, but it at least gives you another roster roster spot and guys who can maybe eat up some minutes. So I don't think if you're if you're the Celtics, you could be thinking about anything grandiose, right? And you don't really necessarily need that, but you, you want something that's consistent that doesn't upset what is now a very good locker room. Um, yes. you know. And, and you want to make sure that you continue that same energy as well, too. So understanding that Tatum and Brown are the alphas in the room, especially when it comes to scoring and, and getting the ball. Marcus Smart is kind of the spiritual leader, et cetera, et cetera. And everybody kind of has a role to play in that, too. So Celtics should be very, very busy here. Um, so I think this is a great, great, great start here on, on Washburn's Whispers. Again, working title. Um, and we'll, we'll go ahead and take a quick break here on Believe in Celtics. Brought to you, I bet, online, man. Good stuff, Gary. Good stuff. And on this week's edition of Dino Time here on Believe in Celtics, brought to you by Ben Online, we're going to be discussing the Celtics, how they fared in rivalry week, and then going into a little bit of a preview for the for the games to come. So one in three during the rivalry week, G. Um, I thought, I honestly, we didn't do predictions. I thought they were going to go two and two. Thought they would have beat the 